you know, my dream is to one day have a safe haven for women, um, not a shelter, but a safe haven where you can go. There's a lot of people, a lot of women who may be in situations where they live, let's say, like in Philly, but their family's in South Carolina. Right. right. And they're in a bad situation. They really want to get out of Philly. They want to get back home, but they don't have the means to do that or Maybe they're maybe they don't even have the education. Maybe they don't even know how or what to do to get out of it. And so, you know, I would like to one day possibly have a safe haven for women where, you know, I'm partnered with other organizations where if you're someplace and you need to get out and you need shelter, you would come to me. It would be completely confidential. You know, your family's in South Carolina, but you don't have the means. I can get you to your family in South Carolina because I'm partnered or I have the resources to do that. And Mm -hmm. and so that is really my dream. But I'm sure there are a lot of people. I mean, because men get abused as well as women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there are people out there that really, you know, need that help. Yeah, they do. But I strongly recommend to try to find a way, talk to someone. People don't like to talk to people they know because they feel like, once again, they're going to be judged. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know so, and then sometimes there's people that you don't know that will give you the most help. Yeah. That's, you ever notice? You ever notice that? That's absolutely true on so many people levels. Know, yes. Yes. So many levels. People, people you don't know. Yeah. The, the people you least expected were the people that gave you the most help. Find a way, talk to someone. People don't like to talk to people they know because they feel like once again, they're going to be judged. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, so, and then sometimes there's people that you don't know that will give you the most help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, you ever noticed? You that's, ever noticed that? That's absolutely true on so many people, levels. Uh, yes. Yes. So many levels. People, People you don't know. Yep. The, the people you least expected were the people that gave you the most help. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so, but I strongly recommend if anyone is listening and you're in an abusive situation to try to find a way to get out, to try to find a way to get help because it's going to get worse before it gets better. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thank most you. Definitely. Thank yeah. you for sharing yeah. that for sure. Yeah. Another mention, another person that, you know, kind of crosses all of our paths, Iyanla Van Zant. You mentioned yeah. her towards the end of the book and uh, her take on protecting the children. Um, yeah. What about her words resonates with you and your mission, especially after that old Vanessa and how she treated those kids in that house? You know, just what about her was so important to make mention in your book? Well, the quote that I put in there, like where she says, you have to protect children at all costs. You know, children don't ask to come here. Exactly. They don't don't ask to come here. And so it's our responsibility as parents or as an auntie or as a friend to try to protect children at all costs. Mm -hmm. And if that means, you know, alienating someone or, you know, getting out of a situation, then that's what you have to do right. because it's not about you. Once you have children, it's no longer about you. Yeah. And one thing I've learned is that you may have to withdraw yourself from people that you consider family or people who are family yeah. to protect your children, whether it looks bad on you yeah. and you, that's right. you know, and I had to learn to be, I'm going to be, I'll be that bad guy. I'll take the, I'll take that L for my kids. Yeah, but right, I just right. don't want my kids, I don't want to accept it and tell my kids to accept it just because it's family and they get out there in the real world and they get something happens to them seriously right. exactly. because of what I'm teaching them. You know, and right. I remember a girlfriend of mine saying, you know, you know, her mom used to be very cautious with her kid, with, with them, as with their uncles. Like, if they didn't feel like they wanted to give their uncle a hug, she'd be like, don't, don't worry about it. Don't, yeah. You don't right. have to give him a hug. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. And then as time went on, I realized because her mother was molested by a family member. Right. And so, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's just like you said, you know, you just have to don't be ashamed and don't be afraid to say no, no. to people that no. are family. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Because, because as we know, statistics will show that it's usually someone close to you 
or the child that does these things. Yeah. Right. And so you just have to be very, very careful who you have around your children. Like you have a lot of young girls now that will have their boyfriends who's not even the father to the child yeah. watch their children. Yeah. You yeah. can't do that. You 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 have to be very, very careful. You have to, you careful, have to right? protect them. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, like I said, they just they didn't ask to come. We have children. You have a son who, is, yes. you know, had his own journey. Yes. Um, yes. Many of us have a goal to groom our children to be financially successful or, or just secure. Um, what have you done for your son to kind of give him a foundation, knowledge, that little cushion, or even just a push to be, you know, the best he can be? Well, I invested in his education. <laughs> <laughs> As number one, I mean, I, you know, because originally, you know, putting him through school, the first four years, I had the money. And so as time went on, you know, each grade, it got expensive. He went to he went to one school in California for kindergarten. And then he went to one Quaker school from first grade to 12th grade. Okay. And so from and every year, the tuition would go up and go up and go up, like almost like college tuition. Gosh. So, you know, it was a sacrifice. But I was determined to do that at all costs because I knew that his education was going to be major. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, we would talk about. Um, a high school diploma was nothing. Yeah. He had to go to college and it was never a debate. It was never a thing. My son always knew that he wanted to go to college. And so, you know, he went to a division three um, college. He didn't get a scholarship. Okay. Um, so the first year um, I had to pay for him to go to school. And then uh, some trustees and the coach saw him in a pickup game and he was able to transfer from the first school he went to to play college ball in the in the next school when he transferred, which was really good. So they were able to help me with financial aid. That's amazing. You know what I mean? So I was able yeah. to get it through. And he had the grades. Yep. Uh, he had the grades to get in. So, you know, that was major. But I knew um, investing in his education would give him what he needed to get through life. Yeah. And I said to him, you know, if you want to go and get your master's, you should at least try to get a job where they'll pay for your you to get your master's because I'm not paying for that. Yes, I, yes, you know, yes. You know, <laughs> you know. A lot of companies but, are doing yeah, that now. So, yeah. You no, know, and I and I talked to him about real estate. You know, he understands um, the importance of you know trying to own a home and you know trying to buy a home and those kind of things like that. So. You know, but like I said, we're very close. We talk about everything. So, but that was what I, you know, to me, that was where I felt that's where I needed to put my money into his education. And that's what I did. We agree a hundred percent. We have, like I said, we got grown children and yeah. <laughs> we've lived that financial aid life and filling out right. that FAFSA and just, you know, doing everything that we need to do. Right. <laughs> my daughter graduated uh, UCF last year. Uh, right in the middle of the pandemic, you know, we couldn't have a graduation or anything. Wow. And it was just like uh, surreal, you know, it, because you like the question I asked you, what expectation did your parents have? We have an expectation for our kids, but we also allow and we're very flexible for real life because we were that age, you know, exactly. life is going to happen. But, you know, when you can kind of help facilitate and support and you know, be there for them in a way to, to provide that foundation. It's just amazing when they can yes. pull through, pull their weight and, and make yes. it all happen. Yeah, exactly. What would you like everyone to take away uh, from or learn from hearing your story? Like what's one major thing? You know, to me, um, my story, like I said, it's more common than you would know. Um, but it's a story of survival to me. You know, I had become accustomed to living a certain way, being with Jackie. I got with Jackie, I was 21 years old. When he died, I was 30. I just, I was turning 30 the next day. And, you know, it's a, it's a good amount of time. And so, you know, it's, it's a story of survival. And, but more importantly, like I said about education, if, if I had had a different 
form of education, I probably would have taken a different road. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I feel like God spared me so I could reach back and help others, which that's what I'm trying to do. You are and doing feel, it. You yeah, are. You I'm are. really, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about this. You know what I mean? And so, but the takeaway would be, you know, just be very careful, you know, really think about what you want to do and and who you want to be with. You know what I mean? Um, right. the, making those decisions is very important. And so, you know, I just, especially on women, because we're so lost, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I, I really wish that we would just slow down, um, get to know people, spend more time talking yeah. and, and really trying to get to know someone before you take it to another level. Don't be so fast. Yep. Take right. your time and get to know people so you can make the best decision for yourself. Yeah. Sometimes That's we right. don't even know the middle name, the last name, you know, and you deal where they, with where they live, <laughs> where they really live. Exactly. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, don't really, you don't even know who they really are. Like, do they have a relationship with their mom? You, they may even, you know, or their parents or like, did they come from a broken home? Do they, do, do, do they even like it? Exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, just simple things that, you know, I think, and I feel like I used to, you know, would talk to young ladies and say, if you can lay down with them, you shouldn't be afraid to ask them questions. Yeah. If, exactly. you, if you are afraid to ask them questions, why are you laying down? Yeah, exactly. Why are you laying down with this man? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Right, I mean, it right. just doesn't make sense. But, you know, I try to think like, like Toya was saying when we were younger, you know, when you think about the teenagers and you, you try to put yourself at that point in your life and like, mm -hmm. what was I thinking at that time? Yeah. You know, oh, and yeah. when I think back about what we were thinking, we were just trying to have fun. We just have fun. That's all. We didn't care. Like, oh, he has have fun. Car. He's taking right. us to the party. You're going. Who's going? You going. Uh -uh. That was it. That, that was it. it. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I never, I never thought about repercussions from being with a drug dealer. I never thought about somebody could get violent or there could be a shootout or I never, I never thought about, I felt very safe with Jackie. Yeah. I felt always felt protected yeah. when I was with Jackie. You know what I mean? But yeah. anything could have happened at any time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but Thank I didn't God think about it. I was having fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Thank God That's you were protected happened. and you, you know, made it through. Yes. yes. So, yes. Made it through yes. to the other side. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much I'm for so sharing. Glad that you were able to be here with us. <laughs> this, was, this was really good. Well, thank um, you. I enjoyed reading thank your book. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I thank your audience for tuning in.